Hi everybody, uh, day 15, Wednesday, 20th of May 2020, 10 days to my birthday. I live in a world where everybody's just doing their own thing, mindless of, of God, certainly. Um, and so a little bit more of the world view, though they're mindful, mindless of him, he is not mindless of us, he is... Um, the, the couple of things I want to say about God is he, he is eternal. God is eternal. It means he doesn't live in time. He doesn't dwell in time. So that when he, when he thinks about you and he thinks about me, he looks down from his, his lofty place and he sees us. But he sees everybody all at the same time. He can just span by, by, his, by his view from his position. He can, he can look and see what's going on everywhere. And, and he is omnipotent. Uh, which means he's, uh, that he is powerful, all powerful to control. So, it's, uh, so this creation that he has made, he is un it is under his control. Um, uh, so that it, so that so that he, in, in, he was there before the beginning, and he knows what the end will be, and he's there after the ending almost. You see, uh, and making sure that, that the end he gets to the end. That's what we were saying yesterday, weren't we? He's made promises that he's going to keep, and they'll they'll come true at the end. And we will have this heaven that is beautiful. Uh, the other thing to say is that is um, uh, he prophesies. So this book that he's given us, the scriptures that he's given us, the Bible that he gave to the uh, the, the Jews, um, you know, up to Jesus, and then the New Testament afterwards, um, that's got prophecies in it. Um, and from his position, he can see what's going on everywhere. So he can tell these people over here that it's going to happen. Something's going to happen there. Something's going to happen. And so many of the prophecies I want to promote the idea of the Lord Jesus Christ, or God does. So he, he tells us, um, you know, that a saviour is coming. And this saviour will, uh, you know, be his son. Um, and he will be subject to sacrifice. So we'll look at some of those prophecies uh, today. And just to underline this thing, that, that God is the... This, our God, is the only God that prophesies. He's the only God, he's the only one that can prophesy. It's the challenge of the gods. I, I wrote a, a paper on it a bit, Mike. The challenge of the gods. God throws the challenge out. If you think you're a God, prophesy. You know, and some people think they can do a little bit, but nothing compares to, to the prophecies in, in this Bible that we've got, which we'll look at now. Um, uh, and I say, so many of these prophecies are for towards our blessing, towards our salvation, and, and therefore include so much about the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, you remember yesterday, we talked about the, the, the blessing that he was going to bring to Abraham. Um, but but the, the context of that oath, that he swore that he would bless Abraham, and, and he, Abraham would have loads of children, and bless him forever kind of thing, and all the nations will be blessed. Um, that was in the context of Abraham, God having said to Abraham, I want you to take your son, and I want you to kill him. <laughs> um, and this was the son that God was going to fulfil all the promises through. <laughs> um, but, but Abraham took God as he was, went and, and was going to make the sacrifice, set the sacrifice up, raised the dagger to make the sacrifice, and God stopped him. And for that, for that faithfulness to the hearing God's voice, God said this, this, that was the context of that oath. But a father in the future is going to sacrifice his son. And that's, that's the father, God the father, going to sacrifice God the son for the salvation of the world. So it's prophesied in that test that he gave to Abraham there. Um, it's prophesied further, if you remember the children of Israel were in, um, in, in all captives in Egypt at, at that time. And God, for their deliverance, said that they should, each family should take, a, take a, a lamb and that they should kill that lamb, put the blood on the doorposts and lintels so that uh, when the angel of death came, um, it would miss their houses out and it would only touch the houses of the Egyptians, their evil captors at that time. Um, and so that lamb became, or the blood of that lamb on their doorposts became a, a sign for their uh, salvation, prophesying Somebody's got to die if somebody's going to get saved. Um, very quickly, very strangely, the, there's a prophecy about the virgin birth. You know, it's, Jesus is born of a virgin, isn't he? Mary is a virgin. Joseph doesn't sleep with her. 
uh, but Jesus, uh, so that, that virgin birth is prophesied in uh, chapter 6, I think it is, of chapter 7 of Isaiah. Um, incredible prophecy, that. And then, then where do, which, which family, where, who is this saviour going to come from? So he's going to come from the tribe of Judah, 12 tribes of Jacob. The tribe of Judah is where that ruler is going to come from. That ruler is going to be born in Bethlehem. And King David, the little lad who killed the Goliath, he was born in Bethlehem, and David is of his family. And Jesus, rather, is of the family of David. So they're going to come from Bethlehem. And they found that out when the wise men came to ask the king, Herod, where does he come? Where's he going? Where's the, where's the new king going to be born? And they all knew it's going to be born in Bethlehem, because it was prophesied, you see. And Jesus came to be being crucified. He was betrayed for 30 pieces of silver. That's there. And they will look on the one they have pierced. They will look on me, the one they have pierced, is also there. just want to finish with this, one of my favourite passages in the Bible. It's a prophecy about Jesus. It says this, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Prophesying in those words, the Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks for listening. See you tomorrow.